Today we're going to take a look at this Cobalt Cube. This was an easy to use web server that you could buy. I believe this is the second generation of it, the, the Cube 2. Uh, they also made a third version, uh, uh, revision 3, and a rack mount version. So they, um, by the time they switched to rack mount, they pretty much switched to AMD K6 chips. But this one still uses a RISC-based processor, so we'll take a look at that. And uh, yeah, the company started in 96 and then was eventually bought out by Sun Microsystems in uh, uh, 2000, I believe. And then, um, yeah, Sun kind of phased them out when they didn't sell very well, but they uh, helped them develop into uh, their first x86-based servers. So this was basically an easy to use home server or small office usually uh, that you could just configure with a web interface and set up and you're, you're good to go. It was really easy to use. Uh, this looks like it's glowing, but it's not. It's just the light from up above. But this does actually light up with two LEDs. On the back, there's power. I don't have the power adapter for this, but we could rig something up. Uh, two 100 base T Ethernet ports, I believe. I don't think they're, they're definitely not gigabit, but I, th I think they are 100 base T. Uh, serial port, there's a, what I believe is a PCI slot, and uh, you have a user interface, so you can actually set up your um, IP address and stuff like that, and there's a 40 millimeter fan and what looks to be a uh, locking tab. There's not much on the back because it's uh, essentially a stripped down computer. Uh, they've custom built a computer without a keyboard interface, that sort of thing. Okay, I've jammed a couple wires into it and uh, feeding it 12 volts at 3.3 amps. And as you can see, it's a, just a little 16 by 2 LCD with uh, you know, no backlight or anything. It's just a basic uh, UI that you get once it boots up. Now this does have a hard drive in it and there's nothing on it. I mean, it's got the operating system, but from what I can tell, this thing was brand new. I've taken the drive out and I've uh, tried to unerase it and look for data on it. This thing clearly has not been used. The interface is a real basic, kind of like old school web setup. You know, you configure users and the services and stuff. It's all the stuff you'd expect to set up a, a basic web server with other services like file sharing and stuff. But you know, there's there's not much to it, so I'm not even going to bother. And I don't think this works properly anymore. I believe it either um, doesn't start up properly or the web interface doesn't start or something. I can't remember what it was. But uh, basically, once it's started up, you can go through the settings and just set your IP and a couple other things. So I think we're going to call it there. On the back, we've just got four screws, and I know there's a couple screws on the bottom. On the front, there's just this little light pipe with a couple heat shrunk LEDs in it, and they have a couple little cutouts to run them out from the, fr the inside of the case. You can definitely see where they got the name. It's literally just a cube. So we can take these two more additional screws off. I have the unit on its side. You can see that there's like an I.O. board at the bottom with uh, all the input and output and uh, some of the support chips. And then you've got the CPU card up here with the memory and the CPU and whatnot. And then you've also got the hard drive attached down here. And this is the... LCD controller and uh, yeah, it's a pretty open design. I mean, they clearly could have made this thing way smaller. You know, they could have done a stacked board design and just left the fan blowing through all the stacks. Instead, they opted for the big cube. That mystery slot on the outside is actually another PCI slot. Um, I know the original models had a SCSI card. This one does not. So I don't know if one of the features you could add to it was uh, a SCSI card. These run a modified version of Red Hat Linux, I believe.
It didn't even take too many screws to get this thing apart. Taking a look at some of the more boring stuff first, uh, there's a nice uh, Sunon fan. Uh, this thing's very clean and it's very quiet. So this is probably, uh, like I said, completely unused. Standard 12 volt, 40 millimeter fan. We've got the hard drive, which is a 10.2 gigabyte Seagate. And it's uh, an OEM model. And uh, this particular one has like a rubber, rubber shell around it, like a multimeter actually. But yeah, it's just a standard hard drive. Um, I think Seagate sold their drives with these on it for a little while, but they stopped when they realized it was stupid. And that just connects with standard ID cable and power. Nothing special. Down on the I.O. board, uh, it's a very nicely laid out board. I mean, it's pretty packed, as uh, you can see. But we've got a uh, VIA USB to PCI host adapter. These two large Intel 100 base T Ethernet controllers. I mean, look at the size of these. <laughs> They're bigger than an i7. Um, We've got uh, the magnetics and uh, real-time clock battery backup and just like serial drivers and stuff like that. Uh, the board's very nicely laid out. Uh, you can see that it is confirmed. It is a Cobalt Cube 2. The 3 amp regulator they have here has a very nice extra copper fill here with a bunch of VIA stitches to really help dissipate the heat. And uh, yeah, just in general, it's a very very well laid out board. Ooh, Sanyo Oscon capacitors. The best. So this is the LCD panel with all the buttons and it just connects with this little header uh, ribbon cable. And all of this is just clipped on. So these are all the sprung uh, buttons. So you get a nice little plastic cover instead of just a plain tactile switch. But this should just come off, sort of, very tight fit, maybe I can just see how much of it, oh, okay, good, <laughs> I was going to say see how much of it breaks, but, uh, yeah, Cobalt Micro Server Incorporated, LCD board, with, oh, looks like there's a little controller or something under there, but this is soldered? I think this is soldered on. Let me see if I can just get this off and maybe we'll take a look at what controller chip or whatever is under there. It's probably just a 595 chip, just uh, an I.O. expander. Nothing unexpected, just a 74F245 octal bidirectional transceiver. They're just using this to send and receive data from the... Uh, the pins, you can see it just wires out right to the um, the buttons and to the LCD, which was very nicely put into a uh, pins, pin header, very short one. And yeah, it's just standard LCD with no backlight. The main CPU board fits into a PCI slot and it's got this four megabyte 72 pin SIM in it. Nothing special, it's just a standard Micron uh, four megabyte EDO part. Uh, at the top we've got this quick logic FPGA that's a uh, thousand gates. Below it we have the quantum effect devices CPU which is an RM5231 running at 250 megahertz. Fairly powerful. It's a risk-based CPU and um, you know it doesn't generate much heat. You can tell it's just got like a metal slug on it as part of the package. We've got a Galileo GT64111 which is the system controller, like the, the main, you could call it like the North Bridge, South Bridge, whatever. Um, we've got some support chips, what looks like some flash memory, possibly for the FPGA. And not much else, it's just some power supply stuff. This connector goes out to the LCD. And there's a little uh, DS1233 here, which is a CPU reset controller. Now, this seems to be tied into the FPGA, so that must be doing any rebooting of the system. It has to do like a, uh, they've probably impl implemented a watchdog timer into it. Up here, we can see it's the 2800 CPU board. The Cube 1 is the 2700, so that's probably their internal part number, and they just called it the Cube 1 and Cube 2. They actually have their holes silk screened. 
Now, uh, it's only the ones with through-hole plating, so I think it has to do with the fact that they've got uh, spots for resistors here to connect uh, the each screw um, that's going through it to the chassis uh, to the ground plane for uh, EMC clearance. So, you know, uh, Mike has talked about this in more detail, but basically they can't really predict how this is going to emit signals and stuff. So what they do is they'll test it by placing jumper resistors in certain parts of it to connect it to ground in different places. And that'll uh, hopefully reduce your signal output and let you pass. You can see they've done it on this one too, but these ones don't have the designator because they don't have the through hole plating. So these things were fairly successful and um, there's a there's a group of people who were able to uh, reverse engineer it so you can uh, put your own operating system on it and stuff and get access to the console and all that kind of stuff because like I said it just runs Linux but um, yeah you're basically just getting an underpowered computer if you try and get one of these now to play around with even if you get one of the more modern x86 ones you know what's the point I mean it's a k6 and uh, the real limitation with these things is the fact that the operating system and the web server is so out of date that it would be a huge security risk even just to use one of these as a joke uh, just because you know there's no security patches or anything for them and uh, yeah I've heard of people modifying the cases to hold ITX boards and that kind of stuff but uh, I don't really see the point in that. I mean, there are much cooler cases, even just standard ITX cases. There's a whole bunch of really neat looking ones. So, um, you know, if you really want a retro look, you can get one of these. They're not too expensive on eBay there because like I said, they were fairly successful. So there are quite a few of them. I, I picked this up for next to nothing on eBay, probably like $10 or something. I mean, it's kind of neat because it's not an x86. So it's, uh, one of the more unusual computers and web servers that are available. Hey Moose, did you enjoy today's teardown? Moose? Moose? Did you like it or not? Moose, everyone can see your nipple. Put it away. Oh, he knows I was going for it. Moose? Moose. Moose is probably pretty frightening in 4K. He's frightening in real life.